Good evening. And uh, it's Christmas time again. So we says Merry Christmas to all our viewers. Happy New Year, that which is to come. This evening we are having our last Bible study for this year. But next year, please God, we are on. But before we go off air for 2021, I want to share with you the beautiful Christmas story. I know some of you have heard it and have learned it many years ago. But somehow the Lord has impressed upon me that we could just go over this wonderful story. It is taken from a number of scripture passages. But I'm just going to read for you today. Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census should be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee and from the city of Nazareth to Judea to the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the family of David in order to register along with Mary who was engaged to him and was with child and while they were there the days that were completed for her to give birth and she gave birth to her first son and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the earth. Let us pray. Kind Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Hallelujah. Most of all, we thank you for this great season a season of remembrance lord we thank you because whether it is december or not you gave us a day that we could commemorate the birth of our lord jesus christ in a human form on this earth and we are giving you thanks thank you god i am asking for your help I know it's not by might, not by power, but it is by the Spirit of the Lord. And so we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And welcome again to a beautiful evening of Bible study. Today, we are going to look at the miracle of the birth of Jesus Christ. The birth of Jesus Christ, uh, we have the scriptural references taken from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12 Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38 and Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 20 so we have quite a bit of uh, let me make everything comfortable good we have quite a bit of scriptural reference references telling us about the miracle of the birth of Jesus Christ. This Christmas story or this Christmas lesson that I'm going to share today 
is a biblical account or gives a biblical account of the events surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ. And this story is paraphrased from the New Testament books of Matthew and Luke in the Bible. So most of our references are taken from the paraphrased Bible from Matthew and Luke. <coughs> Sorry. Christmas is a spiritual reflection or it's a season of spiritual reflection. Also, it's a celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when the announcement was made for the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, there were many people who doubted and were scoffed, scoffing at what announcement was made. But Christmas time is a time to praise God. It's a time to refocus our mind, to go back on God's love that came, as we might say, in a small package, but just rose to be that only uh, the greatest story that was ever heard but it arose or, or it just came up evolved into the most beautiful package that God could ever give to man and that package is his son Jesus Christ you know sometimes when we get gifts we are anxious to see what's inside that package when God gave Jesus and he came as a babe I am sure there were those who were looking around hearing that he was the son of God and they were looking to see what could come out of this little child we would learn that when he was 12 years he was there in the temple conversing with lawyers and doctors or what we'll call the hierarchies but what is to become of this beautiful gift that God gave to us we celebrate this gift in what we call Christmas season but there is more to it it says as Christians or as believers or as people who believe in Christmas when this season comes there's a type of nostalgic feeling I, I, I just oh just something that never seemed to lose its essence it has been around for many years but it has never lost that great feeling of awe the Christmas time I love Christmas time because I was born in this time and so I'm thanking God that we could stop we could reflect but we could also enjoy this beautiful gift that God gave to us something many years ago the Bible tells us that his birth came after years of being prophesied in the Old Testament and so the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the proclamation. This is the miracle that was prophesied about years ago that came into being. 
this prophecy was given in the Old Testament and it was fulfilled in the New Testament many hundred years before Christ a prophecy in the Old Testament concerning Jesus birth was recorded in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 of the Old Testament and it says the Lord himself will give you a sign behold a virgin will conceive and will bear a son and she shall call his name Emmanuel and then we flip over years later and we are looking at the New Testament and the New Testament opens up with the account of Jesus' birth in the first chapter of Matthew verse 18 proceeding along it tells us how the virgin birth prophesied in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14 was fulfilled so many years before the actual birth took place it was prophesied and the Bible tells us in, I, in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18 it says now the origin of Jesus Christ was in this way his mother Mary after she had been engaged to Joseph before they came together was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit we take note of that it was found to be she was found to be a child with the Holy Spirit there is the argument back and forth how could this be believe it or not Mary asked that same question and so what was prophesied in the Old Testament was fil fulfilled in the New Testament we are keeping in mind our topic the miracle birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and already we have heard of one kind of a miracle because in the natural a child cannot come into this world except a man and a woman come together in a union that God ordained or God organized so that there could be conception and then there is delivery of birth but we are looking hallelujah at a child who is going to come to us or who came to us more than 2,000 years ago and he did not go through that natural process but he came <laughs> and he was here on earth how did all this happen the Bible tells us that the angel Gabriel had a visit to Mary and he foretells her of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and as I said it's been paraphrased it says Mary a teenager was living in the village of Nazareth and engaged to be married to Joseph a Jewish carpenter one day God sent an angel Gabriel to visit Mary the angel told Mary that she would conceive a son by the power of the Holy Spirit she would give birth to this child and name him Jesus after that first visit Mary was afraid and she was troubled by the angel's word being a virgin 
Mary questioned the angel, how will this be? The angel explained that a child would be God's son and therefore nothing is impossible with God. Humbled and in awe, Mary believed the angel and rejoiced in God her Savior. What a visit! What a visit! I am sure some of us would like a visit like this that God could tell us things in advance to what is coming. Hallelujah! You know what has just come into my mind? What was predicted hundreds of years before came into fulfillment and now this is a visit of the Mary visit to Mary sorry and the angel Gabriel is telling her precisely what is going to happen and you know what just came to my mind he didn't only told her precisely what is going to happen he told her the sex of the child hey that is reminding me today modern technology and advancement in the medical world is now able to tell us the sex of our child but guess what they have to use a machinery per se to detect it oh hallelujah they cannot stay outside of the womb and tell you what sex your child is going to be but here we have a god who says with him nothing is impossible and that god is able to precisely say to this young teenage virgin you are going to have a son and no mistake was made sometimes we are told this is what is going to happen that is what and when the time comes there is a mistake but not with Mary it was a, 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 an announcement that was so on point in every step of the way this is the miracle working God we are dealing with and the Bible tells us Mary I can imagine how she felt she felt very afraid she felt not just humbled but Mary in her own self was like how could this be I am engaged I am not married and I'm not going to have sex before marriage so we know this is not going to be a way out but the Bible tells us even though she didn't understand everything this young girl trusted God and she humbly accepted the mission that is set before her she is going to go through a time of pregnancy which will be questioned by many but she was willing to go through what God wanted her to do the birth of Jesus Christ the Bible tells us at this time this is a time where there was the reign of Caesar Augustus and the Bible tells us he decreed that a consensus or a census be taken and every person in the entire Roman world had to go to his own town to register the consensus or the census was a form of registration it's a form of assessment who do we have here and so Joseph being of the line of David 
was required to go to Bethlehem to register with Mary. The Bible tells us Mary and Joseph, they traveled a long way, about 70 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Because as we said before, that was where Joseph's family came from. It was a small village about five miles southwest of Jerusalem. And because it was such a small village and so many people have to go to register, could it be? That was the reason why there was no room in the inn or the, the city was overcrowded. However, while in Bethlehem, Mary gave birth to Jesus. Jesus was born in a stable and the Bible says she wrapped him in the clothes and placed him in a manger. Hence, the place where Jesus slept, his first night, I would say, on this earth, he slept in, in, a, in, a, in, in what you call a feeding trough of the animals. <laughs> it was one of these things that you place animals food in. It was filled with hay. And the Bible tells us Mary gave birth to the Son of God. What a beautiful story. But it's not just a Nancy story. It's a true story. The miracle birth. We may question a lot of things as to the birth. What went on? What went on? That's not for us to find out. For us to know that the truth of God's word was fulfilled. The miracle birth of Jesus was fulfilled in a stable in Bethlehem. And that son of God was born. Amen. When that Son of God was born, there were announcements made. An announcement was made to the shepherds. Some shepherds who were out in the fields, the Bible tells us, an angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds who were tending their flocks by night. And the angel announced that the Savior had been born in the town of David. What an exciting announcement. You know, sometimes when we give an announcement, sometimes it is be so, you know, people don't want to listen. But the kind of announcement the angel brought to the shepherd, it caught their attention. Maybe they had read before. Maybe they knew of the prophecy that a savior is going to be born. And so when that announcement was made, you could imagine they must have just tied sheep, whatever they had to do. And they said, we are going to look for him. The Bible tells us it happened in this form. Suddenly, a great host of heavenly beings appeared with the angels and they began singing praises to God. As the angelic force departed, the shepherds decided, yes, we must travel to Bethlehem to see this Christ child, what an excitement that would have been. I could pity in my mind the shepherds just getting ready after the angels were singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. What a wonderful sound that must have made in the ears of the shepherd that motivated them and they said let us go and we must find this new king, this child that was born. The Bible tells us 
after they, they went on their journey the, the scripture says they found Mary and they found Joseph and they found a baby in the stable I can imagine excitement there but if we would understand or remember Mary's demeanor if we want to call that she was seemingly to be a very composed people son she was seeming to be a very cool and quiet young woman and she must have been taken in the excitement but I'm sure in her mind not only was she wondering what is really going on but she too was praising God for the opportunity of bringing into this world the Son of God the Bible tells us after their visit they went on their way praising and glorifying God but Mary kept quiet and she treasured all the words that she heard and the Bible says she pondered them in her heart it must have been beyond her ability to understood or to grasp the true or the profound meaning of what was happening maybe as she looked at her sleeping baby in her arms I could imagine all the motherly instinct came out of her and so she was able to wrap her babe she was able to cuddle her babe she was able to cuddle the savior of this world could you imagine it with me and I'm sharing it with you and I'm just imagining all that is there with Mary at one side we see them in pictures Mary at one side Joseph and that wonderful gift that God gave to us is Dean cuddled by a beautiful young woman what happened after many things happen in between but what happened the Bible tells us Mary and Joseph had another set of visitors and these visitors were called the Magi or the wise men here's what the Bible said and these wise men or the Magi they came from the east and they saw a great star they followed they followed the star because they knew that the star signified the birth of royalty the star signified the birth of a king the king of the Jews the Bible says and these magi were three men and they traveled from a distant eastern country to find the new king by that time there was a new king on the throne there was a king Herod was now ruling in Judea the Bible tells us and when the wise men they followed the star and they came to a place where they needed some more information and the Bible tells us the wise men went to the Jewish rulers in Jerusalem and asked where is he that was born the king of the Jews where is this Christ child that was born the rulers explained <laughs> where Jesus was they said in Bethlehem of Judah and they referred to the prophecy that was given in Micah chapter 5 and verse 2 however this King Herod felt threatened when he heard that a king was born who king is this is coming to overthrow my throne and the scripture says he secretly met with the magi or the wise men and he asked them to report back to him after they found the child because he too wanted to go and worship the babe 
But the all-wise God, the all-knowing God, knew that this was a plot and this was a trick to kill the precious gift that God sent to man and for man. And so the scripture tells us, secretly, King Herod was plotting to kill the baby Jesus. The Bible tells us the wise men continued to follow the star in search of the newborn, the newborn king, and found Jesus with his mother in Bethlehem. They said it was such a distance and probably it was such a journey that by the time history is saying to us that by the time they found Mary and her baby it was about two years he would have been about two years old at that time that's what history said to us however it did not deter them from doing what they pursued after it did not deter them from giving the honor and praise to this newborn child king and the bible tells us hallelujah 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 when they found the child they bowed and they worship him oh that's why Christmas is a time of praise. Yes, it comes with its light. It's come with its celebration. It comes with so many things. But very significant about the Christmas season, the celebration of this miracle birth of Jesus Christ is a time to praise him. It's a time to worship him. And do you see where gift giving comes from? When we give gifts at Christmas time? The Bible tells us those magi or those wise men came and they brought gifts to Jesus. They brought some of the most precious gifts that they could have found. They brought gold. They brought incense. And they brought myrrh oh what a precious time oh picture with me the scene mary with her little boy and the angels all surrounded we portray these things at christmas time but if we do way out in the different parts of the world we in trinidad mightn't be able and tobago mightn't be able to do some of this we may do it in virtual but when we do it in person or do it in, in, in together those of us who are portrayed or you who portray any of these acts or actors or these persons remember the great significance of what they did they worship they bowed down before him and they brought him precious gifts to honor who he is the Bible tells us that after they left the Magi did not return to King Herod because they had been warned in a dream of his plot to destroy the child Jesus knows all about us and he knows all that goes on in our minds and so the bible tells us after such a time there was another decree when the the, the 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 wise men didn't go back to herod he decreed that all the children all the boy children two years and under should be killed here is what this, the, the scripture says. His mother Mary being a virgin who was betrothed 
or engaged to Joseph, a carpenter. Joseph was now warned by the angel and took Mary and the child and they went to Egypt until Herod's death whereupon he brought back his family and settled in the town of Nazareth in Galilee, Galilee sorry, where Jesus grew. What God intends for you, <laughs> no devil can't destroy that. I say this over and over. God had a special purpose for his son to be born on this earth to bring a gift to us a miraculous gift so that we can find true meaning to life what are some lessons we can learn of this great miracle birth one of it is that the birth of Jesus is a miracle that many are finding hard to believe back then many couldn't believe it because they couldn't understand how a child could be conceived out of sexual union they couldn't understand it and that's where the miracle comes in because as we would often say he's a miracle working God what else can we learn from this wonderful birth? We learn that Mary was willing or willingly submitted to God's plan to bear the child even under humanly impossible circumstances. What are we learning? That with man many things are, impos are pos impossible but with God all things are possible so even outside of what human expect the Bible tells us Mary willingly submitted to this that God said would happen what also did we learn we learned that Jesus was called Emmanuel and he came as was foretold by the prophet Isaiah. The Bible says Emmanuel means hallelujah, God with us. Emmanuel came to earth. God came to earth as was prophesied by Isaiah. How did he come? He came in the flesh to live among us oh he walks with us he talks with us he tells us we are his own so we learn that Emmanuel came to be with us on this earth and we also learn or can learn that although Jesus was born as a child with flesh and blood his source was the Holy Spirit that's so awesome so all do he had flesh and blood it was not a spirit that was crucified no 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 it was a flesh and blood person because when they punch his side water and blood came out when they put the thorns upon his head blood flowed when they put the stripes in his body flesh came out with that whip or that thorn that thing he was beaten with so many feel that it was a spirit no it is flesh and blood but his source came from the Holy Spirit it was not flesh and blood inception that caused him to be born it was a miracle working power of God that caused Mary to be conceived and so she had a child even though he was born in the flesh what a great miracle we are looking at we also are learning that Jesus with the human nature 
was born without sin. Amen. So even though he was born with flesh and blood, he was born without sin. He became what was called the God-man. And so he possessed divinity and he possessed humanity. Divinity through the Holy Spirit, humanity through his earthly mother, Mary. Amen. Amen. We are coming to a close. What else can we learn? We learn that Christ as Emmanuel not only was with us, but he is with us today. Since his ascension and the Holy Spirit came, upon those disciples in the upper room the Bible says we are now having God in us and God with us so his ascension to heaven took his what you will call the earthly form of him that we could have seen with our naked eyes his spirit entered into heaven and the Bible says he did say to his disciples I am going to send you someone just like me he who is the Holy Spirit and when he comes hallelujah he will dwell with you we have Emmanuel with us thousands of years ago he went back to heaven but he sent someone to be with us on a daily basis friends viewers Christ will be with us hallelujah until the end hallelujah the Bible tells us he says I will come again I will receive you I will take you unto myself and where I am you will be with always you will be with me also but I am with you always how do we respond to this precious gift how do we respond to this miraculous gift that came in a human form but yet maintained divinity because of his sinless life how do we respond to this gift at Christmas time we do not have gold we do not have myrrh we do not have frankincense to bring to him and even though we have it he's not here in person Oh, hallelujah to go and put it by his feet or to give to his mom but what can we give to Jesus we can give him our lives I say this often because I believe it we can give him our obedience we can give him our submission we can give him our willingness to worship him and to give him praise for what he has done. What do we learn? What significance is this miracle birth to us? It tells us a great significance is that Jesus overcame while he was yet on earth he did go through a lot but it tells us <laughs> he overcame he overcame the obstacles he overcame the challenges and so we too can overcome we too can live this life we are not sinless like Jesus 
But you must always remember, He is with you. He is there to help you. And you know, like Joseph, listen to when God speaks. If Joseph, his earthly father, was not listening to God, he would not have known how to take this young child and his mother and take him out into Egypt where he stayed for a while and be protected by God. God wants us to listen to him. He wants us to be so in tuned with him so we can hear his voice. This Christmas, Jesus is saying to you, I live, I endured in this world as a human. I lived, I endured as a human in this world. I was tempted in all forms as you are tempted. He says, but you can conquer. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I conquered death and the grave for you. And if you would only catch the real truth that I am with you, always you too can conquer. And you will be ready for when I come to take you to that beautiful home that have gone to prepare for you. What a Christmas gift God is offering us. And what a Christmas gift we can offer God. You want that gift? Some of us have already received that gift. But you know what? We want to continue to praise Him. We want to continue to overcome because we don't want to miss out when he comes for us. God bless you today. I hope you were able to learn, enjoy, and get a great feeling of that wonderful, miraculous time when our Savior came into this world. We thank you so much for listening. We say, Father, thank you for this miraculous gift. The gift of the Lord Jesus Christ who came and was protected by you so that you could fulfill the mission for which he came. Father, I thank you. That as Jesus grew and overcome, we can overcome also. So I pray that you will help us. For those persons who are hearing the Christmas story afresh and new, and you never understood much of the significance towards you and your life, I pray that you will make it a part. If you have never given your life to Jesus, and I said sometime before you want to give him a gift. Give him the gift of your life. Oh, he is with you. The songwriter says he walks with me. And he talks with me. He tells me I am his own. God says he can walk with you. He wants to walk with you. But you must give him your life. So I ask those of you, you want Jesus as a Savior, tell him right now. Tell him you want him to be your gift as you give him your gift. We bless you today. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, I say thank you so very much for being with us for this past year and last year from the time we started. There are some of you who have been with us all the time. Some 
take a little break they came back and we had new ones I say thanks a lot on behalf of Pastor Lawrence and myself our technicians that are faithful with us every broadcast we have Samuel Cadogan Ruel Cadogan and Sidel Kwashi they have been the technicians over the last year and more and we say thanks very much to them we say also thanks to our members of straight gate and all our family members all our good friends all who get to know us through facebook or youtube we say thank you for supporting us we look forward for your continued support in the year 22 should jesus tarry but more so we look forward for the rapture we look forward for that time when jesus will take us to be with him and we will see the true jesus that we are serving right now just by imagining or guessing but we will see him because we will be with him those of you who have given your lives to the Lord you may not be close by to our church which is at Wendy Fitzwilliam Boulevard but wherever you can find a good gospel preaching or teaching church go to that church let them know that you give your life to the Lord or you have recommitted your life to the Lord if you are interested in water baptism as a church we offer baptism so for the new year we are going to have our converts class for those in our area or who want to come and join us and you want to get baptized for the new year God spare life we are going to have our converts class walking persons walking for baptism oh it's such a blessing it's such a beautiful time i enjoy speaking with you sharing with you just pray for us as pastors lawrence and cynthia cadogan as we put ourselves together or make ourselves available to god that he will impart in us what he wants us to share with you so that you can grow and you can be who God wants you to be. Thanks again. Thank you, everybody. We love you. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And as I close, I says, let us say, Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. Amen. I just remembered. We say thanks to all our worship leaders, our musicians. You know, you can't call everybody. So when we say thank you. Love you. Love you. Bye. God bless you. Amen.